So let's move on to the next question. Um, so here we have the diagram shows the graph of y equal to f of x. Okay, now f of x is given to you by this. This is the equation of f of x. As you can see, it is going down. Now part one, we have to find an expression for f prime of x and explain how your answer shows that f is a decreasing function. So step by step. So what can we do now? First thing we realize that I can rewrite f of x as 6, 2x plus 3, power minus 1. Right. So now we can differentiate to find f prime of x. That will be first multiply by the power, that will be minus 6. Then we have 2x plus 3, obviously, and then we have to decrease by 1, that should be minus 2. Then multiply by d by dx of the value inside, you have 2 here. So you have minus 12 over the value of this square. This is your value of f prime of x. Now you can just explain that the value here will be positive, it is square. Now you can see for any value of x, for any x more than 0, according to the domain given to you, we realize that f prime of x have to be less than 0. Why is that? Because minus 12 divided by something positive will be negative. That makes sense. So negative divided by positive will give you something negative no matter what. In that case, it is going to be a decreasing function. So that will be reason why decreasing, and this will be given to you by this. Now for part two, we have to find an expression in terms of x for f inverse of x and find the domain of that. So let's find f inverse of x. Okay, so step by step. Let y be, so let me here, let me do that. Let y be f of x, which is 6 over 2x plus 3. Next step is we will try to make x become the subject. So first thing first, cross multiply, you will have 2xy plus 3y, that have to be 6. 2yx have to be 6 minus 3y, and then x will be 6 minus 3y divided by 2y. So f inverse, it is in terms of x, we have to change that to x. 6 minus 3x over 2x. That will be f inverse of x. That is part 2 of the question. Now what else? So we have to find the domain. Okay. Now something we have to know here is that domain of f inverse is the same as the range of of f. Now to find the range of f, we can just look at the graph. As you can see here, the graph starts from here, right? And then as it goes, it approaches the value. What value? Let me uh, write this down. The equation of f of x is what? It is 6 over 2x plus 3. Now when x is 0, what is the value we have? That will be 6 over 3, and that should be 2. As you can see, this have to be 2 right here. Now, by observation, if x continues, so if x continues to infinity, we can confirm that x plus 3 would also go to infinity. Now, 6 divided by infinity, it means it is going to 0. Right? So, we can write this here. So the range domain of this, so the range of f is actually y. Domain is all sorry, range is always described by y or, or f directly. It is between what values? It is between the value of, so of course we will not be including zero. It only approaches zero, that will be zero, and then equal to two. That will be the domain of the f function. Now we are trying to find the range of f function. Now we're trying to find the domain or inverse. So domain it is described by x. We just have to write x between the same thing. That should be two and zero. That will be your answer for the domain of f inverse. Now for part three, we have to copy and sketch the graph of this, making a clear relationship between the graphs. So as we have seen many times before, 
the relationship between a graph and its inverse is simply reflection in the line y equal to x. That's very simple. So let me make a sketch real quick. So we have the y-axis, the x-axis, and we have to show this line, which is the relationship between them. This is the line y equal to x. Now this is given to you here, right? Something like this. So we just have to kind of reflect that. So this is the point over here, and you will go something Have to be a reflection. Label this as y equal to f of x. This is y equal to f inverse of x. So this is the graph and this is the relationship which is a reflection in the line y equal to x. It is always going to be that case. Now last question. The function g is defined by this. We have to find this. So let's see what can we do. First thing first let's try to find f g of x. That will be f g of x will be 6 divided by 2 g of x plus 3. Now simplify 6, 2 times g of x will be what? So g of x is this, that should be just 2 times half x plus 3. That should be 6 over x plus 3. Now this is equal to 3 over 2 as we can see right here. Now first thing first, we can divide by 3. That will be 1, and that should be 2. Then we cross multiply. You will have 4 here, and that will be x plus 3. x will be the value of 1. And that is your answer for the last question, which is f g of x equal to 3 over 2.